So about 17 years ago, I had a friend's dad ask me if I wanted to go out for a glider flight. And I said, sure, why not? About two months after that, someone from the club rang and asked, would I be interested in going for a course that they've got coming up? And I said, yeah, yeah, why not? Since then, I've been gliding about 17 years now and haven't stopped since. So the chap who called was a nice guy called Trevor, and he was a big driving force in our club. He uh, flew a PW5, he was very enthusiastic about gliding and promoting the sport to others, and he was an instructor and on the committee and all that. Two years after I joined the club, Trevor was involved in a uh, fatal accident in a gliding contest. So Trevor was about 200 feet above the ground, only a couple of kilometres away from the airfield in the finish line of the contest when he tried catching that last thermal to get away back to the airfield. Uh, his GPS track showed that his ground speed decreased and he ended up uh, probably spinning into the ground. Sadly, hit a fence with a concrete post in the middle of it. So in 2021, I lost another friend, a uh, good friend Christian, who's a glider pilot here in New Zealand. He was flying in Rieti in Italy and uh, I think in a gliding contest and sadly hit the hills. Christian was a really lovely guy and a great sense of humour on him and we would often catch up at gliding contests around New Zealand. So I know at least three people who have died flying gliders. Another chap was in the South Island, spun into the hills. In 2017 we had two fatal accidents. One a glider crashed into the mountains in the South Island. The other was a Pipstrel self-launching electric glider that had uh, its battery banks uh, catch on fire. In 2016 we had two fatal accidents. There was a PW5 that spun in over the airfield with a new student on board and an ash crashed into the mountains of the South Island. In 2014 we had an ASW20 spin into the hills just south of Auckland, Jury Gliding Club. So in 2009, a PIC-20 managed to crash into the mountains. And in the last 10 years, we've had two fatal tow plane accidents here in New Zealand. And the list goes on. So in the last 27 years, we've had 21 fatal gliding accidents here in New Zealand. That's one fatal accident every 1.3 years. And with only 700 glider pilots at the most any one year flying here in New Zealand, the odds are not good. And this is why it's so important to try a pure track. If you go missing in the mountains or somewhere remote, people will have a chance to find you quickly, which could potentially save your life. Try out pure track today. Make sure people know where you are at all times. We've all heard the old saying, it's more dangerous to drive to the airfield than it is to actually go flying. And that might be true for commercial aviation, but it's definitely not true for gliding or general aviation. Friend of the show, Clemens from Chess in the Air, has done a really good in-depth analysis of what are the chances of dying in the sport that we love. Check out his analysis, I'll put a link to his website in the description below. For gliding in Germany and France, the chance of dying is one death in every 50,000 hours of flying. Or, another way to put it, the chance of dying in the next thousand hours of flying is 2%. It also shows that flying gliders is twice as dangerous as riding motorbikes. Now, I know two people personally who have died riding motorbikes, so they are also extremely dangerous. And gliding is more dangerous by, than general aviation, but not by a huge amount. Interestingly, gliding is less dangerous than paragliding or skydiving or downhill mountain biking, but it's miles more dangerous than driving a car or normal road cycling. Commercial flying is the safest activity you can participate in, and that's uh, considered extremely safe. So, why do we do it? Honestly, I think most people think that these accidents and incidents will never happen to them. We don't think we'll make the same mistakes that countless other people have. Also, to some extent, you must be aware of the risks and be prepared to accept those risks. Quite frankly, gliding is one of the most rewarding sports I've ever done. The community of people you meet and friends you make is incredible and you get to see amazing sights and do things that normal people just never get to experience. The views are stunning. I'm here in Raglan. I've flown over this beautiful part of the country many times. That's the point of this video. It's not to scare people away from the sport of gliding, but to remind everyone just how dangerous it is 
and how much respect it needs. The amount of risk we take is up to us. That is something we can control. We can mitigate risks and catch errors and problems before they happen. That's why checklists are so important. That's why we should practice our spinning regularly. This is why we need comprehensive training and why it's so important to subscribe and like the channel and watch all the Pure Glide videos that have been created. And be aware of psychological traps such as get homeitis and just pushing your boundaries further than you should. You know you should just put it in a paddock because you're getting too low, but you just try and catch that last little thermal. Don't succumb to it. It's not worth your life. Personally, for me, the sport is worth the risk and I love every minute of it.